In this video, I will review a few methods of time series forecasting. I use this data set 12 months of average interest rates for credit cards. And we are going to use this data to forecast the next month. One of the methods is moving average. We average a few months in the past and then that will be our forecast for the next month. I will start with three months moving average. It's using function average. My forecast for the next month will be the average of the previous three months. We don't know if three months moving average will work better or for example four months. So I have a second set forecasting based on the average of four months. So the average of the previous four months will be our forecast. Another method is weighted moving average. We assign weights to the previous months and higher weight is assigned to the most recent month. For example, for the past three months, we can assign 50%, 30%, and 20% to the months. So this will be Now comparing these three results, which one works better? It depends on the cumulative error of the results for each one of those methods. Had we started doing the forecast from the beginning for each of these methods, how much of error on average we had for each of these methods, the method that generates average less error is preferred. So to compare these three methods, I can copy up these averages. I can go up to this point so that my first forecast is the average of the first three months. This is forecast of the past, but then I can see what's the difference of the real number and the forecast and then calculate the error. I will get the absolute value of the error. Why the absolute value? Some errors might be positive, some negative and if we add them they will eliminate each other the absolute value is the absolute value of the error then we just average them to see which one of those methods generate less average error so abs function for absolute value of the difference of the real number minus the forecast And these are the differences and their average. We call this average mean absolute error. That's the average of absolute value of the errors. And we can compare this number for all methods. For the four months moving average, copy the formula up to this point so that the first forecast is the average of the four months and get the absolute value of the error using the same method averaging absolute errors and do the same for weighted moving average. Here we can compare the numbers. Average error for three months weighted moving average is less than the other two methods. 
This is the preferred method among these three. Now go to the next tab, Exponential Smoothing. Here we have the same interest rates, 12 months. In Exponential Smoothing, forecast of the next period is forecast of the current period, plus alpha, a constant between 0 and 1, times the error, difference of demand and forecast, or the real number and forecast. So for each period, we add or subtract a percentage of the error to our forecast. So if the error is negative, which is forecast is larger than the demand, then error will be negative. We actually subtract that number from the current forecast. For exponential smoothing, we need to have one initial forecast. Could be an estimate of the experts or provided by another method. Here we have 9.5, 9.5%. We start from there. For month of February, our forecast will be the previous month forecast plus our alpha. Alpha is up here. A constant will be referenced. I make it an absolute reference for copying the formula. Times the error, which is the difference of the two. Interest rate minus the forecast for the month before. If you copy this formula down, we can generate a forecast for all months, including one month into the future. Next step, what's the error? Cumulative error. So error for each period is the absolute value of the difference of the two. Copy this for all months, then average it. The average of absolute errors for exponential smoothing method is less than the other previous three methods. So this method is preferred so far. Now we get back to alpha. We don't know what's the best alpha. This is a process of trial and error. Most of the dedicated software for forecasting find the value of alpha. Here we can do it manually. We started from point 0.25 and we start decreasing it. Point 0.23. And we can see that the error is increasing. Decrease it one more time to 0.21 and error increase. So we go up from 0.25 to 0.27, decrease 0.28, faster decrease of the cumulative error. 0.3 increase of error again so the optimal value is somewhere around the neighborhood of 28 percent getting back to the first worksheet mean absolute percentage error is another method of finding out the cumulative error and that's the percentage error relative to the real number To calculate this value, we have already calculated the mean absolute deviation or mean absolute error. The ratio of this number over the real observation, and we state this as a percentage. So you can click on the percentage sign in Excel and make it a percentage. You can copy this formula for all rows and then average of these percentages. can do that for the other two methods as well 
and compare the results. Results of mean absolute percentage error are consistent as well. Three months weighted moving average is better than the other two methods. I will explain seasonal forecasting in the next video.